Welcome to this week's episode of Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for Wednesday, September 4th, 2013. We begin with a story from the world of material science. A group over at Michigan Technological University has developed a new kind of ion thruster from a substance you may have heard of. Right now, there is a lot of interest in high-efficiency ion propulsion for small satellites. Sometimes devices that are as small as smartphones could serve a number of functions in orbit. The trouble is maneuvering them once they're up there. Many current designs involve an array of tiny hollow needles with which ionic liquids are propelled through using an electric field. The problem with this design is that it's very inaccurate. Not only is it expensive to manufacture, but it can get damaged on the ride up trying to put satellites into orbit. So this group simply got rid of the delicate needles altogether. Instead, they opted to use a magnetic liquid called ferrofluid. You've probably seen this stuff as a scientific curiosity. It's usually just iron nanoparticles suspended in oil or another liquid. Fortunately, they were able to find another group from the University of Sydney that was working with a company to create a material that was a ferrofluid ionic liquid combination for another purpose. With this, they were able to create a liquid-based thruster. It's simply a solid metal block with the ring of the ferrofluid on it. A magnetic field holds it in place to, and creates five-pointed peaks in the surface. Adding power makes the peaks extend and thin out until they are spraying small amounts of the ionic liquid. This design would be extremely difficult to damage and cheap to manufacture, and the group hopes this will improve the effectiveness of small satellites. Next isn't really news, but more of an update for an ongoing project in the world of biotechnology called C-Biotech. It's an effort to sample and analyze organisms from various marine environments in the hopes of finding new and useful compounds. Humans rarely make useful biomolecules from scratch. They're either modified or outright stolen versions of molecules already found in nature. But much of that comes from plants, animals, and microbes on land with the massive diversity of the ocean being a largely untapped resource. Other scientists have investigated certain specific compounds found in marine animals, but this and other projects are going on a direct search, first sampling from a wide range of marine environments, from Arctic waters to volcanic vents, with many of the samples needing to be taken using remote submarines. Then the scientists will tackle the even more arduous task of analyzing the samples looking for novel compounds and genes. There is also a particular focus on finding new antibiotics from marine microbes to compensate for our current failing antibiotics. However, there are some concerns such as public acceptance of compounds derived from marine organisms. But more importantly, the legality of using naturally found compounds in biotechnology while still allowing companies to protect their intellectual property. Again, not really news, but a cool project that we thought we should cover since we didn't when it was first starting. Our final story is news from the world of genetics. Researchers from the National Institute of Health have extended the lifespan of mice by 20% by modifying only one gene. This gene, coded for a protein called MTOR, involved in regulating metabolism. With the researchers creating a group of mice that only produced around 25% of the normal amount, interestingly, they found that the increased lifespan was not uniform through all of the tissues. Overall lifespan increased, and the mice did specifically well on memory and, and balance tests as they aged. They also had increased muscle mass when old, and performed better in mazes than normal mice. But their size was slightly smaller, and the reduction of this protein caused their bones to deteriorate more rapidly, and have a somewhat comprised immune function. More research is necessary on this particular gene, and obviously it won't be directly applied to humans, but it can still be useful in the development of drugs that act on this gene and target specific organs, like the brain where it had positive effects. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. Our final story brings up an interesting question. What body systems would you be willing to comprise for overall extended longevity and perhaps even mental function? Let us know your thoughts on that and all the stories in the comments.